Hey everybody, I'm Tom Bogan with Land EKG, and today I'm going to teach you guys how to make a grazing cage out of a cattle panel. So let's get started. So this is the cattle panel that you're ultimately going to use to make the grazing cage that we have here. Um, our grazing cages are strong, they're sturdy, they're very functional. Um, unfortunately, they won't stand up to a swather or an elk being chased by wolves crashing into it. Other than that though, they're great and I think you guys will really enjoy them. So this is the template that you can get, um, that you're going to be using to make the grazing cages. It can be downloaded at landekg.com and I first want to point out that we try to use as much of the cattle panel as possible. We don't want to have a whole lot of waste. So we did think we did a pretty good job of that. Um, we can see here that we use the bottom part. We use these little crosses as the anchors for the cattle panel, or for the grazing cage. Uh, we use this long bottom rod for the weave rod that we use to keep the corners together. Um, and then in green you can see these are the sides to the cage itself. And then we do have a little bit of waste here in red, but you can use that for um, for your garden, for peas, tomatoes, what have you. But um, we did use a, do a pretty good job at designing a template that works well for um, optimizing most of the cattle panel for a grazing cage. So what you're going to need is that grazing cage template. Like I said, print one of those off. You'll want it to have it with you the whole time. Uh, a cattle panel. Some tape to mark out where the cuts are going to be made. We used some masking tape for this video. And uh, some form of cutting tools. You can see we used uh, bolt cutters, but there's some other tools that you can use. Uh, also a vice grip or a vise. Um, we use a bunch of vice grips. Um, some form of wrench. We used a crescent wrench. And something to bend and shape the cage anchors with. Uh, you'll see that uh, we do that later on. And then also a hammer. So first thing you're going to want to do is mark out where you're going to make your cuts. Um, first you want to mark out this bottom row here and you'll notice in the cattle panel as I'm sure you know uh, the bottom there's two columns that are actually a little bit skinnier than the rest of the columns. Those are the columns that we're going to use for uh, the columns we're going to use for the anchors themselves. Um, and then you also, after you mark out the bottom two rows, you're going to want to mark out the individual triangle pattern that you're going to be using for the grazing cage individually. Um, I like to do it one by one, so you mark one out with the tape and then you cut it out. And then you mark another one out with tape and then you cut it out. That way it, it kind of can get a little bit confusing with all the tape. Um, you really, it helps to visualize what you're doing and if you do it one by one with the tape, uh, it really helps you out. So you want to start with the bottom section. Um, one important uh, note to make to make when you're taping everything is on the very bottom row you want to make sure the tape is flush with this bottom pole. Um, that's because you don't actually want to cut these little these poles off here with like directly flush with this bottom pole. As you do here, you're going to cut it flush. Here, you're going to cut it flush. As you can see with the tape, um, you're going to leave some room there to be able to cut cut the rod flush with this pole as well as cut this one flush. But this one you want to leave about one inch knobs um, sticking up off of this main this main bar um, for the whole length of the cattle panel. And you'll see why later, but just make sure you want to do that. Um, so then once you get start cutting out the little cross, you just start cutting across the pattern and run the entire length of the bottom row. So you can see here I'm cutting flush with that pole. And here is you'll actually have some scrap metal. This is where you have a little bit more scrap metal. Um, since you're cutting this off here, here, and here, you'll just have this one long piece. And so that'll be, that'll be scrap. You'll be using this middle one for the anchor. And then this will be scrap. And then just repeating in scrap, anchor, scrap, anchor through the rest of the cattle panel. Um, and you can see once you finish, this is what your cage anchors will look like, this little cross. Um, and take note that one length of this middle cross beam is a little bit longer than the other. That's because this one was cut flush with the top up here, and this one we left that one inch knob, as you can see here. So that's basically what you want it to look like for the anchors. You'll have 12 of those too when you're all done. Um, so as you go along, it's nice to have something to prop up the cattle panel itself when you're making these cuts. Um, you can see here I used a rock. Um, and then once you're all done, you'll have a 16 foot length of the rod with all these one inch nubs running the length. Um, and be careful with those, they're pretty sharp, they'll cut into your clothes, they can cut into you pretty good as well. So just be careful of those. Um, and then you're going to cut that into thirds, and that's the next step. Cut those, cut the bottom rod into thirds. Um, since it is 16 feet, 16 feet long, you're going to have each section be 5 foot 4 inches. So you measure that off, and then you cut that. And then you're done for now with cutting those pieces. Now we're going to start cutting out the side panels for the cage. Um, so when you're making your cuts, you want to make sure you start up with this over up one, over one, as you can see here. But then after that, you go up 
2 over 1, up 2 over 1. And that's the general pattern throughout the whole cattle panel and you, when you're cutting out your grazing cage. So that's a good way to think of it as you're making your cuts and you're setting up your tape to really visualize what you're going to be doing here. Um, you can see here after I, I've made my final cuts for this side of the cat, side of the grazing cage, uh, this is what it's going to look like with a little bit of scrap metal hanging off the side there. Um, and then you're going to conti continue to cut out the first panel. Um, just be very careful to make the correct cuts because if you don't, you could compromise the strength and the structure of the grazing cage itself. Uh, and just be very, be very cautious as you're making the correct cuts. So that's why it's important to use tape and to really visualize and to have that template that you printed off from our website uh, right there with you to, to help you out. And so then once you're all done with cutting out one whole side, it'll look like this. Um, you'll have scrap here and then the rest of your cage that you're going to start to cut out over here. Uh, now you're going to start making the second side of the cattle panel with your masking tape to start outlining everything. Um, one thing, once you start your second one and you finished your first one, you're just going to cut off these uh, little bars here one by one. Um, that's the nice part about once you get going is all you have to do after you finished a half is just cut those off and then you'll have one whole half done. Um, you can see here I've indicated it with the stars. You just chop those off and you get a half all done. You don't really have to do a whole lot of measuring really. But then once you do the next half, you are going to want to use that tape. You're going to want to use the template to give you an outline of what you're going to be doing. Once you finish cutting everything out, you should have three triangular panels, which will come together, um, which will piece together later for the grazing cage. But this is what they'll look like uh, with the scraps in the corner. And then here's your two pieces of scrap metal. So now we're done cutting, we want to now start to bend and shape our cage anchors. You can see here I used a transformer box. Um, it's pretty strong, but you can use a hitch. You can use anything that's really metallic and strong enough to bend this metal, these anchors, which they're relatively malleable, so you just got to find something that's pretty strong and um, just put some muscle into it, and it's not too hard. And once you do that, you're going to want to bend it with about an inch, inch and a half on either side of this middle crossbeam. Um, so that'll be about three inches wide at the middle of that U, and then it's going to look like that with about probably two and a half, three inches in diameter here, and then it starts, that's where you want to make those bends uh, running the length of those of those bars. Um, once you Now we've got uh, all our anchors done, now you're going to want to twist off the excess pieces on the sections of the bottom rod. So here you can see I used that same uh, transformer box. It turned out to be pretty handy. Uh, and we, and we, uh, we nailed it down with the vice grips to this metal plank and got it real sturdy and tight. Um, you can use a vice like I said earlier. We were just using these vice grips. Um, and then we use our crescent wrench or a pipe wrench, but here you can see that using the crescent wrench and you want to twist it in a horizontal fashion that's horizontal um, to directly horizontal with those little nubs that are sticking off and you just kind of twist and pry and you can see here it's starting to go and then it just pops right off. Uh, it's real simple. We used to kind of um, kind of sanded these things off and there's lots of other ways, but this is by far the most effective and easiest way to get this done. So once you have all that done, now you're going to want to start to assemble the grazing cage itself. So the trick for doing this is you want to get all three pieces propped up together and then interweave the panel corners in an alternating over, under, under, over pattern. So you can see here in this middle photograph, if you start at the bottom, um, you have the corners, you're going to have one go inside the other, but then when you go up to the next corner, you want to have that side go over the top of the one that was just on top. So it goes over, under, under, over as you go up here. So you can see this one on the right was just over this one. Now it's underneath it here. And then on top it's on the over it while this one over here is under. So once you kind of start to put it together, it makes, it makes pretty good sense. So now you want to take the rods, which we use from, we just pop the knobs off and use it for the bottom section. And we're going to use it to interweave those rods through the corners of the panel. Um, first, you're going to want to bend uh, this rod by lining it up with the corners of the with the corner of the pyramid running to the top of the cage and then once you line it up you just want to bend anything that's sticking up over and beyond this cage just into the cage itself um, so you can see how that works here and then once you get going you're going to want to weave it through the corners of the panel in a similar fashion kind of over under over so you can see here I'm starting to weave it it goes first over 
this triangle here and then it goes under and then you bring it over under here and then just repeat and this is where the hammer can be kind of useful once it gets down there a little ways it's a little bit tricky um, if you can have somebody with you it helps to really guide the end of that uh, the end of that rod through the corners and then all you got to do is now drive in your cage anchors you do three per side and use nine of them for your grazing cage I think you'll have three left over and you can hammer those in step on them and they'll keep your grazing cage on the ground and once you've done with that you're done with your grazing cage and it should look something like this um, here's an extra little tip though you can use our land EKG rain gauge on your grazing cage to track the precipitation in your pasture and um, we found this to be really handy because you can go out and see how much grazing you've done over the year and also check your precipitation at the same time it's pretty handy and to do it it's not too difficult all you need is some doubled baling wire and uh, that's and that's about it so first you're gonna slip the rain gauge into this one of the corners here in the top part of the triangle and then you're just gonna use the uh, the, ba the double bailed, the doubled bailing wire to fasten it down. So you wrap it around one corner, and then you see uh, here I fasten it around here. You, you loop around the rain gauge itself a couple times, and then you fasten it back down here. And once you finish up, there's your rain gauge. It's all in there. You get your dipstick that comes with the rain gauge, and then you just leave it in the pasture. You're all ready to go. The rain gauge has been successfully mounted. So that's about everything. If you have any questions, you can email us at office at landykg.com. Um, we're on Twitter. We're also on Facebook. You can find us there. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Thanks. Bye.